And starting, starting, and we are here. This is Richard, and this is uh, Dark Streets and Darker Secrets, set in the Beneath the Canals uh, zine-based setting by Michael Lombardi and tons of really fantastic uh, creative folks. Um, tonight we are doing sort of the uh, one of the uh, set in the the strange uh, otherworldly city of Pintola, uh, which Michael created and. Uh, Lots of people are coming in to uh, to help him expand. Uh, tonight we'll be starting a Pentola-based adventure um, called. Uh, sorry, I lost my title there. Smoldering Garden of Bone uh, by Michael and by Michael himself, as well as Abigail Lalonde, who did all the illustrations and cartography, uh, which. Either tonight or next week, I'll I'll try to make sure I share some of Abigail's work because it's pretty incredible, um, and uh, I have three returning players and a brand new player uh, tonight, and uh, we'll be introducing our characters now. Uh, let's start with Sybil, played by Stinter. All right, so uh, Sybil is uh, in her 40s, a former uh, oil equipment operator who uh, got injured on the job and in the process of this injury picked up uh, a strange key and a sense that she's got some sort of forbidden knowledge that she can't quite access. It's like, you know, always on the, on the sort of tip of her tongue, uh, but she can't quite uh, can't quite get to it. Um, and she is the, getting the name of the, the tough. Um, so she is strong, but not terribly smart or agile. And then uh, Salazar, played by Jason. Yes. Salazar is uh, the gifted, uh, possessing some supernatural powers, uh, including the ability to sense other people's supernatural abilities, uh, and also alter his appearance to look like uh, nobody in particular. He was uh, just a regular guy who accidentally got trapped in the body of a serpent man, apparently. No idea why. Uh, wasn't really quite clear on how we even managed to get away from them, but some random serpent lady seemed to help him duck the people that were uh, chasing him. Uh, and I guess uh, now he's he's kind of working for her. Um, yeah. That Also, we found out last time that he can grow very, very large if he's so inclined. He wears very baggy clothes. Um. All right. You learn from experience to wear baggy clothes, I assume. Yeah, it's just one of those things. You, the first time that your shirt gets completely torn to shreds. It is undignified and un, unneighborly to, to walk around, you know, with your shirt turned to shreds. Yeah, dude lives in the sewers, but even he has standards. Right. Um, and Thuban playing uh, uh, Jabril. Uh, Jabril Rahal is also the gifted though he's more uh, attached to demons rather than just being a serpent man by happenstance. Uh, he was chosen by a demon and also owes that demon a death because he, it saved his life. Uh, what else? There's a lot of wolf and dog motifs with the demon. And, uh, he has several spells like... Uh, Good time. <laughs> animate like he has animate dead now. Uh, he can damage. He has damage in touch, shadow clock, and summoning as well. Nice. Okay. All right. Um, going back. Um, we are picking up from where we we about. A, a week or so after where we left off last time, um, 
I wanted to kind of get a recap of what happened over the last couple of sessions, which were pretty interconnected, before we uh, head out on your first job for the Suzerain. And I can call on people, but I'll let you sort of volunteer first. Oh, fight, wait, wait, sorry. We completely skipped our brand new character, Asmus, played by Jesse. Apologies. Yes, so I am uh, Asmus Af Hellstrom. I'm sure I'm pronouncing that wrong. Um, I like the I like the rhythm of it. Um, he he him pronouns. Um, he is the nimble archetype, um, kind of a dissolute nobleman slumming it is what I'm calling him. Um, you know he's he he's he's out. He's out there in the city trying to have a good time. Um, the extent to which he's choosing this and has been or has been forced out uh, from his family is something he prefers not to discuss and uh, may or may not be true. We'll maybe play to find out. Um, he could be anywhere from 38 to 55. Um, you know, he's, he, he's a wiry physique and he moves very fluidly. Um, he has, he has a, somewhere out there in the city is somebody that, um, he was maybe a little cruel to in victory in a duel once and who since then has hated him. Um, and for some reason he carries this stone, um, sundial kind of attached to a leather strap over his shoulder. He won it. Uh, in a card game, why on earth he allowed it to be placed as stakes and why he feels like he has to schlep it around with him is um, something he doesn't think about very hard, but uh, is nevertheless the case. Interesting. Nice. Okay. All right. Um, how do the three of you know Asmus? Maybe the Suzerain introduced him to us. I don't know. I'm sorry. So the the Suzerain could have introduced you to him. Maybe that's just my. Uh, that's not a bad. Uh, off the that's top not of a my bad head. suggestion. What does everybody else think? Mm -hmm. I'm happy to be um uh, working off uh, a debt I incurred to one of the Suzerain's followers. Um, or maybe even that's how I fell into the suzerain's orbit, but now I just do jobs for her. Nice. Okay. Um, any other thoughts along those lines? or That was what I was kind of thinking would make sense. Since we've, we've just uh, you know, made this deal with the suzerain, so then it could make a lot of sense for her to be like, and here's this other person that you could also work with. Uh, I've hired this other freelancer that I want you to work with to make sure that yeah. not everyone I hire betrays me all at once. Yeah. Uh, all right. So with that said, why don't we recap what happened in the last couple of sessions? Well, in the first session, we went <clears throat> underground based on a tip from the suzerain um, that uh, there would be some kind of a a tomb featuring uh, uh, the body of some sort of royal wrapped in a cloak made from a stone that fell from the sky. And uh, we happened to bump into one of Sybil's old rivals um, who was in the company of um, some other uh, shape-shifting kind of person who had access to sorcerous powers. Um, Things didn't didn't go well. Conversation did not um, resolve that situation. So that person ended up without a head. Um, but we ended up with um, a, a a brand new cloak and uh, a corpse, I guess, which we kept. I guess that's still back in in uh, Jabril's uh, apartment. That's, you know? you, you've had some time, so you can tell me where it is when you uh, set off. Um, and this is for those listening at home. Not a not some new corpse. This is a this is a 
This is an ancient. Oh yeah, mummified remains. Pardon me. Yeah, yeah. like a, like a you know vintage corpse. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, it is. It is not. A, it's not a person who is is recently deceased. Yeah, remains. You might say. Yeah, this vintage corpse is still in my apartment because I can animate her at any point. I'm I'm sorry. <laughs> I have animate dead, so I can just <laughs> unde undead her. I guess. Okay. Or revive her, I guess. I like I don't know how exactly anime dead works. I don't think he <laughs> comes back with a full capacity, but I can do that if in worst case scenario. Well I hope she doesn't miss her cloak. Alright, so <laughs> what happened last week? Oh, this is a range and tried to ambush us twice and we repelled both attacks and so now we work for her. <laughs> <laughs> it was kind of like a job interview, I guess. We were hanging out in Gibril's apartment when um, there was a commotion outside that was clearly by people who were trying to create a fake commotion. So I guess somebody was trying to get our attention. And then so when we... You know, if you're wealthy, if you can't beat them, hire them. Yeah. So uh, peeked out the window, saw a couple people on the ledge, Yanked them in, uh, put them to sleep, stuffed one of them in a closet, pretended to be that one to try and get the other one to talk, convinced that one to talk with the by putting the fear of a demon into him, went to the appointed meeting space to try to arrange to sell the remains and or cloak, got jumped again, fought those people, I think Jabril might have killed one of them. <laughs> Maybe just a little. Jabril may have killed many people. I mean, he... <laughs> so that's like, an... so like, sure. So you're hired. <laughs> like that's how that works, right? <laughs> oh, if you're going to beat up my current hirelings, I, I might as well just hire you. Yeah. I hear you have an opening. <laughs> right. Asmus, you don't seem like the person who, who routinely goes for spiritual teachers. How did you end up working for the suzerain? So um, I think that um, I was in debt to one of her followers. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I did some work for her. Um, to sort of, uh, and it's possible that like she had targeted me as someone that she thought would be helpful. Um, both my family connections possibly and my, um, uh, skills. Um, turns out I wasn't buying any of her mumbo jumbo, but I was willing to work for her for money. Um, the, uh, debt paid off. Um, I have to I have to feed the uh the gambling habit somehow. Um as well as some other habits. So it seemed to it worked well enough for me. Nice. Okay. All right. Um this is a just a mechanics reminder if you want a one point bump in your luck score? Give me a permission to bring in your complication in this adventure. Uh, and you can do that at any point um, before your, you know, even after your first luck roll, but you before the luck roll, which it, it will first impact. Sorry, uh, I, I didn't, I'm not quite following that. Maybe just because that's not clear to me what, like, what when you would roll luck, but. So there's, there's a, you roll luck sort of to when when a stat tech just isn't the uh, isn't the appropriate thing. Let me read out the. It's, um, it's kind of like the trick of luck roll, but like with one right. die instead of two. Got it. All right, that makes sense. Yeah. So in any time your your capability has no influence, and the referee still wants to decide by chance, I can call for a luck roll. Got it. Uh, you want to roll equal to or under your luck. Um, if you go over your luck, 
your luck goes down. I'm sorry, and what's your luck stat? I just have a like three. That's yep. the got most it. people is three. And you're rolling and it's, on, and a, it's ro on a D6. On a D6. Got it. Okay. Um, however, if you want it to go up by a point, uh, give me permission to bring in your complication. Oh, yeah. You can definitely bring in my complication. Okay. What's the fun of having a complication if you can't bring it in? Uh, what's the name of this person uh, who you scarred in the duel? Um. And who are they? I mean, yeah, obviously it's a duel, so they're someone important. That is a or someone great, who thinks they're important. Great question. I think it is um Jens. I don't know why I'm going with Nordic names here. Um Jens. Um how do I spell that in your J E N S. J E N S. Okay. Um Martinau. M A R T I N A U. Okay. Um, Who are they to you? Um. So, I think, I think he is my brother-in-law. I think he's my brother-in-law, and I think I got drunk. I never got along with him. I got drunk. And I accused him of uh, marrying into our family just for the money, um, which was an absurd accusation because we have a name, but we don't actually have very much money. His, his family is, in fact, much wealthier than ours. Um, and he, challenged, he was enraged. He challenged me to a duel. Um, I beat him very handily. And then after he was defeated, um, I cut his cheek to scar it. Mm -hmm. Um, and for the humiliation of the entire experience, um, you know, he hates me. Okay. Tell me a little about the sibling Jens was married to. Um, so I think Jens was, was, is, let's say is still, um, married to my twin brother. Um, my twin brother, um, what's the first name? What's the first name? Um, should I be very silly? No, I'm not going to be very silly. Not too uh, silly. Pascal, my twin Pascal. brother, Pascal. Um, uh, who, um, I actually get along with very well. Um, up until yes. this moment. Um, and the, he mostly sees this whole thing as like, I don't think he quite realizes the depth of hatred that's happening here. Mm -hmm. um, I think this is a case where like, he thinks, oh, they just don't get along. It's dueling. This is, this is, this is what we do. Um, there's honor. There's a fight. Everyone, you know, everywhere, everyone leaves happy. And I know they dislike each other, but it's, it's not that bad. He's a little bit in denial. Um, so why are they currently separated? Why are they currently separated? Um, if you ask them, they will give you different answers and they will both be 100% sincere. Okay. Jens, right. Jens, Jens says it is because, um, he can't abide Pascal's constant defenses of me. Um, and that, right. And Pasc Pascal will say it is about money. Um, right. That it's about, right. That, that they had a dispute about how to handle their finances. Um, and um, that, um, Jens had invested some money poorly and then reacted badly when Pascal confronted him about it. And so they're, 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 they're separated over these sort of like constant um, fights over money. What was the poor investment in? Um, if it was oil, that would be great. And it's oil. I was going to say railroad, but oil is great. Uh, all it right. is oil. 
we have established that in the fantasy to sickle version of Pintola that we're in, the sort of late period version of Pintola, uh, that uh, Michael and team have been very gracious about sort of cheering us on as we as we take his uh, very Renaissance city and move it up to the late 19th, early 20th century style. Mm -hmm. um, we have decided that there is an oil well outside Pintola uh, that is now abandoned, was was drained dry unexpectedly where Sybil used to work. Right. And, uh, I think, and I think Yen's invested like a month before it went dry. Right. Okay. It was a high risk investment. I mean, or Yen's is an idiot. It's unclear to me, right? Like, Everyone thinks their brother-in-law is an idiot. <laughs> this is true. All right. I added most of that into a comment there for you, just Jesse. Oh, wonderful. Um, let me know if there's a, it, let me know in the comment if anything's wrong. Um, I put it right on there. Uh, anyone else want to let me know sort of right at the start that they want me to bring in their complication? I welcome it. All right. I think that my complication is that I think that the suzerain's messing with my character, so it seems like it should be pretty easy. <laughs> yeah. I think I'll wait until later to decide because we already have two complications in play by default, so. All right. Yeah, we, we kind of started bringing mine in right at the very end of the last uh, session when I saw that door. So if you'd right. like to continue to press on that uh, so that it doesn't, we don't lose that thread, I'm happy for that to happen. Very good, all right. So for those of you bringing complications in, move your luck to four out of three rather than three out of three. Um, And I'm going to Okay. So we'll get more deeply into mechanics as we go on. Um, but and I'm going to Pull up a name real quick. Why are you all today? At Jabril's. Sorry, sorry, no. Why are you all today at Osmus's apartments? We've already picked on Jabril. Apartments because Jabril's apartment is too small in it, and no one else has a good enough apartment. <laughs> uh, what kind of got you here? Or what what led you to come here today? I mean, everybody expects there to be remains hid at Jabril's house. <laughs> <laughs> I 
nobody expects to have a princess hiding in their bathtub or somebody else's bathtub, I guess. <clears throat> I think we're running away from someone who was chasing us. What made you think it, what made about the, the fact that you were being chased think it was about the, the princess's remains? Well, I'm thinking, and anyone may jump in and add, it's that they haven't gotten delivered. Like the whole debacle that the blood mage was supposed to deliver the bones, and that hasn't happened, obviously, because he's dead, and we haven't impersonated him yet. So that, so it's like, and we don't know anyone else who wants the bones, really, so. And they were pretty much after the bones, they said. Yeah, I was thinking something along those same lines, like we even maybe recognized, because I, I believe we let those people go after mm. we confronted them in the tomb. So we might even like recognize some of them when yeah. they came for us. Yeah, we right. only killed so the we, blood we knew what their agenda was because we knew who they were. Yeah, and we let those two guys go. They're broken into the apartment, too. Yeah, but they were the Suzerain's people. That's true, that's true. So they wouldn't be after us anymore. Oh, yeah, the but other guys were looking for the thing for somebody else. And right? Yeah, and my old co-worker, whose name I'm drawing a blank on, um, Lazar, uh, with the nice boots. Oh, they're a, an Once independent night. prophet. Lazar did not have a happy ending, did he? I thought we let him. Oh, oh right, right, right. Go. It was the blood mage who ended up decapitated. Right, right. Yeah, Laz yeah. Laz Lazar walked out. <laughs> yeah, Lazar walked out sad. His boots looking shabbier than what we remembered. <laughs> and had all of you met Asmus before, or were you already sort of knew you knew you'd be consulting with this person, but had not met yet? Um, I'm going to say that um, he looks weirdly familiar to me, and I don't know if that's something that um, that I remember as Salazar, or that's like a leftover memory from this body. Anything else anyone wants to add to that before I sort of jump in? So I think what we'll say is that... Uh, I think you'd all met at least once as the suzerain was telling you that there would be details on a job forthcoming. Uh, the suzerain is one of those bosses who sort of delights on limited information, even though there's no real purpose to it. Um, just delights on like, they're not ready to start an expedition yet. So they're going to keep you waiting to find out what the expedition's about for no other reason than the joy of keeping somebody waiting. Um, we've all had that boss. Um, and, uh, so when, uh, you were sort of accosted by Lazar's people, um, You knew to decamp to Asmus's place, I think. Um, and shortly after you arrived there and realized that you'd gotten away um, from Lazar, your rival's influence or uh, people who were trying to... Uh, Track down the uh, the dead body they had, they had planned to still steal. You are met by one of the suzerain's lieutenants, who appears to everyone but Salazar as a very attractive 
uh, middle-aged men. Uh, sort of a debonair, um, active looking fellow, um, by the name of Seville. Salazar, you see his true nature as someone of cold reptilian blood, um, almost cobra-like. Um, Asmus, what did you do when Seville arrived to sort of make him feel comfortable before you sort of started with a discussion? Um, so I think I said, I said, oh, Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, let me. What time of day is this? Is this evening, afternoon, morning? I believe, well, let's let's say mid afternoon. Mid afternoon. Uh, I think I um, uh, I'm imagining I live in kind of like um a boarding house, um like in a kind of bohemian part of town. Um, is this the wealthy bohemian part of town though? So or is it a wealthy house in a bohemian part of town? Um, so it is neither. It's like, it's it's the sort of like, it's the part of town where the uh, the, the 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 scions of the wealthy go to feel like they're being moved to feel like they're being bohemian. Gotcha. So okay. if you want to think about like, you know, Williamsburg in Brooklyn fifteen years ago, you know, twenty or something. You know, so something no like one, that. No one pretends they're being bohemian here anymore. Right. Um, I but said once, he's sitting here in Williamsburg, Brooklyn. But once, but once upon a time, right? That was right. the uh, that was the that that was that was the vibe. Um, right. Right. Um, and uh, maybe more than fifteen, but you know, um, and. Uh, and it's sort of like a it's it's like a boarding house. I think I rent a part like it's like sort of a parlor with a small bedroom attached mm -hmm. right um and so i immediately i i i i i i call down to, to the landlady to see if she can bring up some some uh some tea um some tea and cold drinks um for for my guests yeah i think she definitely brings up a samovar with sort of the the th thickly sweet black cinnamon and other mm -hmm. spices tea. Mm -hmm. um, and I think maybe I also pull a lot of hookah. Yeah. Um, uh, something that uh, Seville does not um, partake in. Okay. Uh, but compliments the tea, especially loudly, especially while your landlady is standing there. You're very polite, Seville. Very polite. I appreciate that in a guest. It is uh, well, the the most I can do, the least I can do, the least I can do. That is the that is the expression. Well, well, welcome to my home. Or can now that we've now that we've the, the is everybody here? Or is it just the two of us so far? I believe it's all of you. All right. Um. So so I I take a pull on the hookah as I as I. Uh, offer the hose then to somebody else um sort of holding it out to see if anyone else takes um and say so so what can we do for you here so what i'd like to know is for the other three of you the three of you who just got quasi chased here because you know you weren't exactly sure they were pursuing you but you are sure they saw you and they were interested in doing something like chasing you uh you uh, are pretty sure you shook them pretty quickly and then came here. How are you sort of disposed as you are sitting in uh, Asmus's parlor um, with this sudden appearance by an agent of the suzerain? I think Sybil is sitting someplace where, like, you know, 
depending on the, the exact layout of the, the room, basically where she can like be part of the conversation, but like if someone were to come through the door, she would like be there immediately. Uh, and it's kind of like looking over towards the door every now and then, like in between bits of the conversation. So tense and watchful, is that is that fair, Sybil? Yeah. And sort of in, a, in the movie version, what would uh, people kind of see at home to sort of reveal to them how tense and watchful you are? Um, I think I think a lot of like I'm imagining I'm kind of sitting in a a, a chair, but I'm kind of like at the edge of it, um, like almost ready to get up from it, mm -hmm. and like kind of rock forward a little bit every time there's any kind of a little, and I'm sure there's, you know, there's all kinds of little noises and things going on outside. Cause this is, you know, a building with other people living in it. But every time there's one of those, just, you know, not, not making a thing of it, not drawing attention to it, but you can just like see her lean forward just a little bit every time there's a, a noise outside. Right. Okay. What about Salazar? You're sitting here in the parlor. There's an agent of the suzerain here who is also one of the people. Yeah, one of the people that, well, that's just it, is that Salazar's been on the run from Serpent Folk. He hasn't actually sat in a room and gotten a really good look at one. So he's just kind of sitting there like stuck still, just staring, like wondering, like, what have I gotten myself into? Is, does, is this my people now? I don't, I don't even know what this. I mean, this is different from the other serpent folk. This is a. This is. These are. I. He's just. You know. Unblinking. What about Jabril? Jabril partakes of the hookah to calm down. How do we know that Jabril needs to calm down? What are we sort of seeing? I think he just uh, quick, very quickly takes the hookah hose from Asmus when he offers it. Like, yeah, thank you. And then he just takes a puff. Yes. So the, what you're passing around, the, the hookah, Asmus, is this, fine tobacco or is it richly flavored tobacco um by richly flavored i mean like by things other than tobacco or with juices and sugars and um so as is generally uh this is this is like a flavored tobacco for sure mm -hmm. um and i think um no yeah it's it's like a it's like a very sweet almost kind of like cloying um fruit flavor some combination of fruits, maybe like pear and uh, fig. That sounds lovely. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So I, 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 I tend to think of apple as being one of those, uh, but sort of that mm -hmm. heavy, uh, cloying, not too, you know, not heavily smoky tobacco flavor mm -hmm. that you get in a hookah bar, mm -hmm. um, but mixed with some, uh, some, uh some sweet but not overly flavor or not overly precise fruit f fruit smells mm -hmm. not not nothing that makes you just go oh that's grape or oh that's berry just exactly sort of just sort of that sweet fruitiness mm -hmm. of a of a of a pear um are there any spices in there or do you do you just relish sort of the fruitiness so so this particular i think i think uh I pride myself on on my diverse tastes, um, and mostly like if there's something new in the city, um, you know, I want to I want to try that. So this th I think this particular blend is something that my tobacconist um, like told me. It just came into the city. Um, it's 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 I've only sold it to two other people so far. It's and I'm like 
very excited by this. And I think um, I'm not enjoying it terribly much. I think I actually mostly just prefer tobacco flavors, but I'm pretending to enjoy it very much because it is the new thing. Um, nice, nice. In fact, it's just too sweet for me, but I'm not going to tell anybody that. Um, Asmus, what inexpensive pieces of decoration or art are in your parlor that would show your taste? Um, so I think what you see is sort of like three different things that don't go terribly well together. Um, there is a small bronze statue of a bull, you know, like sitting on top of uh, like a little cabinet. Um, there is a, um, there is, there is a um, sort of also, I say, moderately sized, um, uh, geometrically patterned, um, uh, like textile wall hanging. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, um, opposite that on the far wall, um, is a portrait is a, is a, is sort of, is like a fairly large portrait of, uh, my brother and I as teenagers. Oh, nice. um, sort of like um, dressed up in sort of military uniforms that neither one of us in any way earned, but that per perhaps our parents had hoped we might at some point in the future as we were posing for this uh, this portrait. And like the idea is sort of like in terms of in terms of in terms of the both of the both of the non-personal pieces of art are things that some dealer told me this is the new thing this is the exciting thing um and so i hung them on the wall or i bought them but i don't i don't really know much about that but there's this the this this one very personal uh portrait uh that connects me back to my brother is um saying we are um uh we are fraternal twins and we could not look more different if i am uh if i am sort of like wiry and uh and slim, uh, he is like a uh, square jawed and heavy set. Nice. Mm -hmm. All right. So you're all sitting in this parlor that has this kind of haze, this kind of sweet smelling light hint of tobacco haze, um, and the smell of a very, very sweet, spicy tea. Um, and a very kind of eclectic set of decorations with this 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 portrait um, hanging over, which which uh, Seville cannot take his his eyes off the portrait while pleasantly complimenting uh, your parlor and the the tea and your landlady's hospitality. Um, and as soon as you are alone. He says, Asmus, you are your brother. I, I fear his, uh, I fear this could be awkward for all of us. My brother? Awkward? So I see you've met was, him. What was the name of the, uh, the gentleman who was complicated during your uh, expedition to the uh, the tombs. Um, uh, that was for a question for Sybil from the from the from Seville. Sorry, say that again. What was the uh, the na name of that gentleman that uh, you you said was causing complications? Uh, 
Lazar. Um, yes, 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 yes. He's a bit in the employ of someone very, very interested in materials underneath the city. Yeah, we kind of figured that. Yes, yeah, somebody... Somebody by the name of Jens. Jens Martinell? He says, looking at Osmus meaningfully. I think I, I sort of shrug and say he always did have poor judgment. Yes, well, he has fine connections. Very, very fine connections. Our uh, rumors still suggest... Still looking at as like, know this guy? Some, uh, I think he's still married to my brother, unfortunately. That is unfortunate for your brother. I've been telling him that for the past seven years. But, you know, the heart, the heart wants what it wants. Even when it wants garbage. Mm, well... Yin's heart has been set on an alchemist who is supposedly missing. When you say his heart has been set, we don't know. I'm never exactly certain what to tell you. But let me be honest. We're looking for an old missing person who we think who we believe has been experimenting with a combination of alchemy and biomancy in the undercity. who may be uh, ready to do some necromantic experimentation. And, and Yen's interest in this is? Economic, I believe. Well, then whatever it is, it probably doesn't work. The problem is not that it, it, it won't work for making money. It, it, may work for exposing the city to danger, which would be against the suzerain's interest, which are the interest of the city. If it's not for the city, there would no one, there would be no one for the suzerain to spiritually enlighten. God forbid she she lose her marks. Civil looks at you pointedly. That was rude, I'm sorry. We're looking for an alchemist named Paprika. Went missing twenty years ago. From 
This very neighborhood, and Sybil, you know this is the neighborhood where you had the Suzerain's people tried to ambush you as sort of a, a and then her representative sort of pivoted to hiring you. Um, Twenty years ago, from this very neighborhood, abandoning his lab, their lab, uh, abandoning their work, and not being seen above ground for an extended period of time. An alchemist and biomancer originally. but very interested in those plants that do not need light to grow. The funguses, the molds, the mushrooms. So who knows where paprika has gone? But Yins has hired Lazar to locate them and bring them to Yins for some experiments. I believe you still have the remains of the lost princess. Yeah, we still have them. So, so sounds sounds like it might be safer if they stay lost for now. Who knows what Yins would get up to with Paprika's assistance? I need you to find Paprika. We have not seen in the Undercity. Um, or in the known portions of the Undercity, or in the known portions of the city below that, and ensure that uh, they do not enter into any arrangements with Yins. We are willing to negotiate exclusive access to Paprika's research and funding. That's uh, that. That's the offer we bring to Paprika. Oh, certainly, yes. You may certainly. That's the offer you bring to Paprika. the uh, The job, though, is to ensure that Paprika does not enter into an arrangement with Yens. I trust that distinction is clear. If it will make Yens happy, I'll be happy to stop. I do like pettiness. Perhaps that, perhaps, perhaps whatever comes of this will get Pascal to finally kick him to the curb for good. <sighs> Families. Families are very complicated. And here he looks at Salazar. Now, I do believe that... Uh, oh, yes, payment, payment. When you can assure me that you have arranged to ensure that Yins and Paprika do not make an arrangement together... Uh, we will pay 600, I think. Does that sound fair? Sounds good to me. 
and standard arrangements. Anything additional that comes into your hands in the process is, of course, yours. Very well. Sybil finishes the tea and stands up and uh, nods to everyone very politely and uh, lets himself out. You hear him exchanging pleasantries with the landlady in the hallway. Um, Sybil, you have a, a thought about where this might be. What does everyone do? Where do we begin now? I just ask that in character. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I stand. I, I I stand up, and I'm sort of like taking apart the hookah and beginning to tidy up. You know, I put the the the, the tray with the the tray with the the tea out by the door where the landlady can take it, and I'm like removing the removing the coal from all the all the sort of disassembly cleaning type stuff you would do as you're you're getting ready to leave. And I, as as I'm bustling around, I say, I can ask my brother if he knows where his his husband has been has been spending time. Um, but. I'm not, I don't know if we want to alert him and Pascal will go right to Yen's. He'll see it as an excuse to talk to him again, I'm sure. They've been separated. Sybil, you have a vivid memory of a dark, dark, bitter and sweet drink richly flavored um, and of an un underground laboratory. And then it's gone. And then you remember what you saw the other night that you're pretty sure the suzerain did not see. Mm -hmm. So this, like this memory just like hits me as we're yeah. sitting here. It started sort of okay. poking at your, it started poking at you while he was talking and it was after sort of silence mm -hmm. fell after he left that it sort of became more concrete. You were able to sort of pinpoint yeah. what it was about. Yeah, I, I think I actually I get up and I go over to where the the tea is and there's like a little bit left and I like swish it in my mouth and and drink it to try to like get that taste out that I Here's, you know since I remembered it suddenly so vividly. I think um, one of the complications is that tea also has, especially the sugary tea, both has that slight tannic bitterness and uh, mm -hmm. sweetness, but it's a different quality. Yeah, it's, it's like some of the same notes, but not exactly the same thing. Yeah, and I I can tell. I think when I I drink that last tea that it's it's a different thing. Not like confirms that I'm not just like remembering the tea that we've been been having. Um, mm -hmm. And so I think I, you know because I don't think I've told anyone about the the door that I saw because it was just like, it was a weird thing and it didn't, I didn't necessarily know what to make of it at that point. But now with this all like coming back right after Seville has been talking to us, um, I think that I like, I sort of say to everybody, okay, there's, there's something I need to tell you about and maybe you all can help me put this, this together because I, I'm not quite sure what this all, um, what this all means um but so the other the other night when we were meeting with the suzerain um i saw this there was a door there like a 
like not a not a normal door. It was wasn't something anyone else would be able to see, but like I I know I definitely saw it there. Uh, I could I could take you back and show you exactly where it was. Um, and then just now when when Seville was talking, I had this this other like a memory of this like laboratory and this like this taste um, in my mouth. And I know it's got, it, like, it must have something to do with it. Um, and I, you know, and I, I've told you, I think I've told everybody that I've got some sort of weird memories because they, you know, before they've like almost gotten to the point that I could remember something. And so I've like talked about it a bit. Um, so you'd all be kind of, at least uh, Salazar and Jabril would be familiar with this idea that I have these buried memories. Uh, I'm gonna go I, look into the know, book. <laughs> I'm gonna pull out the book and try to turn to a random page to see where it goes. Uh, I think we were <laughs> using a luck check for that, weren't we? Yeah. Uh, so what I want to do is experiment with this. You'll make a luck check. The mm -hmm. number on the die is how many questions I'll answer. Okay. But if it's above your luck, your luck's gonna go down. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Why don't you roll it? Five. All right. So your luck goes down to two, but I will answer five questions, and I will be honest about four of them. Oof. All right. <laughs> uh, let me think of five questions to ask then. Uh, why don't you start with one and then see if, and then let them build. Uh... So you don't have to think of all five at once. Where does the door lead to? Um, there is a, a series of illustrations. It's not even illuminations anymore. They're deliberate sort of lined illustrations, almost like a like an early type of sequential art in which you see the same figure sitting um, and being brought gifts uh, by people who look a lot like him. Um, but unrecognizing um, and then there's a, a picture it showing something that seems like it's almost at one time, at the same time, a garden and a grotto. A grotto is sort of an underground space and, or a sunken space and, but it's, also growing rich with foliage of some type. Foliage of some type. Who is the person in the image? So the person in the image is more just like an emblem of forgetting. Mm. Uh, so th I won't count that as a question. Oh, okay. So it's like. They're, yeah, they're just sort of like an emblem of, of having uh, someone who has forgotten things. What is your second question? Mm. Why does Sybil keep having this near epiphany, epiphany moments? <laughs> so the next page you turn to has a bunch of unreadable text that's illegible to you, but it also has a picture that would remind Thuban the player of some of those early illustrations and early versions of of a uh, of a uh, Alice in Wonderland of a uh, the Mad Hatter's Tea Party, except there's lots and lots of people there. Uh, 
Uh, and all of them are workers of various types. People who work on oil, people who work in sewers, people who work on the water supply. All of that is uh, the people at this, this tea party uh, led by this this person in very, very weird and eccentric clothing that looks excessively formal for tea, for serving tea. Was there anything where the oil expedition was? Or like, what, what was the oil, uh, well, for lack of a better word, uh, what was it hiding? For a moment, you can read the, the letters on the page or not read them. You can get the general sense of them, but then they don't really make sense anymore. But you get the sense that it was the opening lines of the paragraph you flip to of the first paragraph you flip to you know and that they're set off in a different type style and type and uh, size than the rest of the lettering on the in the page like there's the big drop cap and then the first line is is larger all caps print um and it says it was never exactly, it was never really what you thought it was. Why does the Susarin not want Je uh, Jens and Paprika to have uh, an arrangement? I believe that you're down to two questions, right? Yeah, that was my second to last. Or, so yeah. one, one of these next two will be a lie. Yeah. Um, Thanks for letting me know that it's not one of the first three questions that was a lie. <laughs> I thought I'd narrow it down for you. Um, Decisions, decisions. Um, the suzerain you see the person in the, the excessively fancy clothes on an altar with somebody standing with a knife over them as if they're about to be sacrificed. And what's the last question you ask on the book? What does Jens have to do, or what have to gain from all this? Or rather, let me rephrase that. Uh, uh, or actually, let me ask a different question. Uh, who want what is the identity of the people who want the bones or the remains of the of the princess you 
you see some a picture of a man who looks like he's wearing modern clothing and his hands are dipped in some sort of very dark liquid almost like petroleum and you see people standing behind him in what look like very very antique robes wearing those sort of that cloak toga and their faces are hidden in shadow but you see sort of just their eyes and their their very pronounced distinct lips and teeth um whispering into his ear and this is not this is this is not does not look like it's designed to be like a representational drawing it looks like it's very presentational like you see shadowy figures whispering into the ears of this into the ears of this man uh but they have very pronounced eyes and teeth okay so Even i guess faces are clearly hidden in shadow otherwise i'll close the book all right i guess we can might, we might be able to find paprika in there after all it's been hidden for it's probably been hidden for I don't know how long and we and the we he was they were supposed to not be found so a secret entryway would make sense What are all of you planning to do? I'm willing to lead everybody to where that door was if we, if we want to check that out. So just for my framing, are you going to wait or do you want to do it now? What time of day are we at? You're roughly a little early tea time-ish. You've got a few more hours of daylight left. I mean, I'm I'm good to go now. Let's do it. All right. All right. Why don't we go to a 15 minute break? Come back about 10:10, 10, 10, and we will get into that door and wind up about 10:45. Does that sound good? All right. Sounds good. I'll see you guys in about 15 minutes.
I wanted to tell you, Richard, you inspired me to pick up the um, uh, Riverside books again. Oh, good, good. Which I haven't read in 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 years, and the like the the Tremontaine um, uh, uh, prequel stories that I hadn't that I hadn't read before. I'm very much enjoying them. Oh, have you have you been re- have you been reading or listening? Uh, reading. You told me that the the audio books are great, but I just I don't listen to a lot of audio books. I find yeah, that I don't have like a ton of time. Like just the well, I usually end up not being not not being able to finish them. So I end up so I so I've been reading them, but they're 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 very good. Yeah, the Tremontane is just I could not I couldn't stop once I started with the Tremontane series, mm-hmm. and uh, Lisa Paddle told me about them several years ago. And I did. I waited until this year to actually finally get going on them. Right. What was funny about it was, so I first heard about Ellen Kushner and the and 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 like the Riverside books when, uh, like Swords Point, whatever it was that Serial Box, right, which was mm-hmm. the um, uh, like the people who were serialized the stories. I, I I'm very into Max Gladstone's books, and so he was he had a series that he was directing, wrote some of for, and then like, collaborating with people on. And I was like looking at the other stuff that they were that they were print that they were printing, and I, I was like, oh, that sounds like a cool concept. It's a prequel to something else. I'll read the I'll read the things it's a prequel to. Mm-hmm. And um, so I, I read Sword Point and um, Way of the Sword. Right, that's the second one, um, or something. It's something like that. They're sitting here next to me. Um, Anyways, and then I was like, and then, and then I, whatever, I, somewhere along the way, I, lo- I forgot that the reason I had picked them up was because the concept from the serial, ver- like the serial box stories sounded cool. Yeah. So I never ended up reading those. <laughs> um, uh, I discovered them long, long ago because the, a, an early draft of the first chapter or, or the central chapters in the fall of Kings, mm-hmm. which is the last book, but the second written. Mm-hmm. Uh, ended up in an anthology, and I was like, "This is really cool." And it was like you said, it was nearly impossible to track down actual copies of Ellen Kushner's work. Um, and so I just kind of forgot about them until a friend started raving about the last, the last full novel written, which was "The Privilege of the Sword." So right, that's what it's not the way yeah. it's "Privilege of the Sword." Yeah, and the privilege of the sword was so good, and then I went back and read Swords Point, and then the full fall of kings, and um, so that was I, I love Ellen Kushner, mm-hmm. and I keep forgetting to to also to, to, whenever I talk about it publicly, to Delia Sherman, her wife, uh, also co-wrote. Mm-hmm. I think at least Fall of Kings, if not if not Privilege of a Sword, uh, and that's that's a slow moving. That's a slow-moving series. Um, <laughs> so uh, languid. It is well. I mean, once they started Tremontaine, they 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 moved pretty quickly because uh, they had a team of writers. But but the first three took a couple of decades to come out. I think somewhere. I, I think someone told me once that. Uh, uh, anyway, but uh, that. Uh, yeah, that was like you know. She and Delia had been dating for a while, but th- their whole relationship was after the writing of Swords Point. I think someone I heard something like that, but with, then they like, co-wrote the second book together. Anyway, uh, that is not where we are as a group. We are in the city of Pentola, uh, which has a name, unlike the city in K- Kushner's books. Um, so. You have everyone's followed Sybil to the door and it's the same afternoon, correct? Um, give me your uh, sources of, what do you have on hand as sources of light? Uh, kerosene lantern. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I too have a lantern. I also have a lantern. And then me as well. <laughs> cool, okay. Uh, and how many days of food are you bringing with you? Two, three, five. 
it's one day of food, basically one physique worth of inventory or something. I'm really just, just trying to think of how long, how, how many days of, of expedition are you prepared for? For somebody who's been gone for 20 years? Mm-hmm. Listen to me, you cannot carry 20 years worth of food. Right, like what's the what's the trade off here? I guess is the is the the question. Yeah. Well, also, like you know, how much time are you taking before you leave? Things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, right. I think the the, the trade off is I might consider you a little more encumbered if you're bringing several days of you know many days of food versus like a day or two. Mm-hmm. I think. I'm fine bringing like a couple days worth, maybe just yeah. so, and it's like if it looks like wow, this is going to be a bigger project than we thought it was, then we can kind of come back out and regroup. Mm-hmm. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Agree. Well. <laughs> All right. So you're there, and Sybil, as you get to where the door, you know, the door is. Like you start to smell like this faint, spicy cooking smell that is oddly familiar to you. You've you've smelled it and been around it, and it's associated with actual things you've tasted before. And it's very faint, and it's just sort of kind of wafting very slightly right there by the door. Or where you know the door is. I mean, there's not a visible door. Okay, that's what I was going to ask. Like, so I don't, I can't see the door, but I like right. I know you know, where you it know, it's the, you know where it is. Um, you know roughly the outline of it. Mm-hmm. You can sort of picture it opening in your head, but you've not opened it. What are you doing yeah. to sort of look so, for or find that? So I think I'm approaching the spot where it was um and i'm gonna reach out i think i'm i think i initially go to reach out and just like touch it with my hand and then i like have a second thought and i pull the the machete out and kind of poke at where it would be Mm -hmm. with the end of the machete make an intellect check at advantage and this is not for whether or not you find it this is for how long of poking around you need Okay, and so remind me how the advantage works. You just roll. You roll that d twenty twice, and you take the you you okay. pick which number you use. Okay. So I'll just roll two of them. Well, I got a sixteen and a twenty. <laughs> so, take the one that uh, isn't a great fail. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um. It takes a while and you might be getting a little bit discouraged. So like I'm like clanking the visible stonework and stuff and not getting anything that feels like this mystery door. Right, right. Can I sniff Um, my... um, So, like I said, this is not like just, you know, the stakes are not like whether or not you get it open. It's just how long it takes to finally pinpoint the right thing. Um, And you see, you see it and you realize you should have seen it earlier because it's the the brick you're supposed to press has been pressed recently. You can see sort of the grimy thumbprint on the brick. Um, And you can see now on the ground the portion where somebody has not left a footprint, but they've scuffed out a footprint going into that wall. Okay. Yeah, I point that out to, to everyone else. Uh, it looks like looks like we're gonna have company. And then I'll 
I'll hit the brick. And from that point, you know, it's, it's a series of releases. Um, and it doesn't like automatically just open like some sort of automatic door, but it becomes turnable. And, you know, you're, you're, you're very strong Sybil, so I'm not going to make you roll for, for that, but it, it's, you know, it pivots um, when released and you can sort of press it open. Um, and Sybil, you put your shoulder into it and pivot the pivot the door. Um, and that smell still doesn't get very strong, but there's sort of a little bit of waft just as you open it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And it, you know, your stomach just feels a little bit rumbly, not with actual hunger, but with just the memory of, of food you, you enjoyed. Mm -hmm. um, and whose flavors you can't quite pinpoint. Um, yeah, and I think I'm, I'm feeling kind of torn because on the one hand, it's like I want to excavate more of that memory in case it's helpful. But on the other hand, it's like I, I worry that it's like a distraction or it's going to like suck me into something. And so I'm kind of like shake my head and try to try to focus on, you know, bringing everyone through the door here into what's ever on the other side. All right. What is everybody else up to? You know. Sorry, I was distracted. Oh, the question is whatever is everybody else up to as this door is opening, you um, know? I think yeah. I, I sort of like step back um, with my hand on my on my pistol, just sort of like ready to cover um, the entryway. I'm gonna sniff magic or sniff for magic if there's any magical effects. Mm -hmm. Let me roll that. And I don't sniff anything. That's a seventeen. There's definitely something odd about that spiciness. There's something esoteric about that spicy, spicy smell in the air. I'll try to sniff some. But it's hard to pinpoint. I'll try to sniff some magic too, as long as we're sniffing things. Yep, I'm going to fail too. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah, it smells funny. I'm going to uh, walk into the doorway as soon as... Uh, and and just plunge into into darkness with my lantern out as as soon as uh, it it seems like uh, there's nothing in my way just because I'm actually starting to get to the point where I'm thinking I might actually be more comfortable underground than above ground. Um. All right. Salazar, you've sort of pushed your you've sort of you know gotten in um, at the there's definitely an entryway here. Um, and it goes down into darkness via a set of stairs, a set of stone, narrow stone stairs. They go just past the edge of your lantern light. And are you the first person sort of going down or, or pointing down? There's not a lot of other direction. Unless somebody else says otherwise, sure. Who's following Salazar? In 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 the in, in immediate terms, not like are you going down, but who's immediately <laughs> behind Salazar? I think I probably am. Okay. And then which of the remaining two is bringing up the rear? 
Um, if if um, if uh, Jabril doesn't mind, I think I'm going to take the take the rear. That's fine. Mm-hmm. All right. One second. And you're all heading down the stairs. Um, you begin to, like, as you move, it's hard to pinpoint it. But there's this kind of gentle, pleasant, musical sound. It's not a, a kind of music that you have a, a description for or that you would associate with, like, having heard something like it before. Um, but it's still pleasant. Like, frequently, like, very new forms of music can be disturbing or, or troubling or grating. Um... But this is just pleasant from the moment you hear it. And Sybil, for you, that might be because you've heard this music before. And it's still very faint, just like the smells of spices are very faint. Are you continuing down the stairs? Sure. And Sybil, you're, you can't pinpoint why, but you feel like you've seen somebody perform this music like this before. Um, Can I tell where it's coming from? Um, one second, sure thing. It, I mean, it's it's coming from at the base of the stairs, but then like far beyond that, and there's really only like. For music sort of coming in your direction, there's only one direction it can kind of come up. Mm -hmm. The stair is sort of towards you. Okay. So yeah, I guess just keep proceeding down towards this. It kind of feels like we must be on to something if there's something going on down there. I'd like everybody to make an intellect check. Tell me if you succeed. It's roll under, right? Yep. Six equal to or under. I did not succeed. Um, is there a difficulty? No, you just equal to or under your your intellect. Great, because I rolled a one. Nice. All right. I failed. I rolled an 18. Luckily, the two of you who failed are in back. <laughs> um, I mean, I, I passed. Are yeah. No, no, oh, yeah. You're fine. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. It's uh, Sybil, you failed, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, luckily... Two, the two people who failed are not in the lead. Uh, Salazar is in the lead. Um, and what you hear is a faint squeak, but not faint as in far away, faint as in kept low, and then sort of a hiss. Um, 
and then you see you're able to sort of stop as the the stairs sort of open up into you're still on the stairs but you can see where they open up into a large room um and you can see a couple of rats very large rats or rattish nutria roughly looking creatures with matted fur and sort of red shiny eyes in your light uh scramble onto the stairs and sort of hiss at you as like the faint faint sound of squeaking kind of comes from behind them how large are we talking here um about the size of an urban norway rat <laughs> hit, hit me with like other animals like cats oh yeah <laughs> like the like, no, those big gray rats that, that that look really scary when you see them in news stories because they're way too big um uh, but maybe roughly a foot long, okay. maybe a little bit longer if you add the tail in, man. So a couple of those, plus there's something behind them, it sounds like. More of them, it sounds like. Oh, okay. Uh, and they look agitated. They look agitated by our presence. Uh, you know that some people came down these stairs not too long ago. Uh-huh. Um, um, and, uh, yeah, you can see the, in the edge of your light, you can see what look like the bits of sort of a rat nest sort of scattered. Gotcha. Like bits of, of board and, and, and fabric and, 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 uh, little bones and uh, other things that rats might use to nest in look like they're sort of scattered across the floor at the edge of this sort of room. <laughs> Would it be possible to, uh, like, are they clustered together enough that I could try and use my powers of sleep to give them a little rat nap? Uh, you may indeed. Thank you. How does sleep work? Would you read me that description again? I would be happy to. Thank you. Um, it says, um, targets within an area of a short distance from me. Um, oh, excuse me. It's within long range of me, but a short distance radius, whatever that means, mm -hmm. um, that have up to some number of hit dice fall asleep for that number of turns. Um, so if it costs, if they are more than two hit dice, then this is going to cost me some health. Okay. Um, how much you you know? There's several of them in there. Mm -hmm. you, and by several, I mean you. Over five. Mm -hmm. How much health are you putting in? Um. Well, you know, this is actually an interesting question about the phrasing of this. Um. Because uh, it's not clear to me whether it means a combined some number of hit dice or whether it means they have like each of them has some number of hit dice. Um, no, no, it's, it's the total, it's the total number of hit dice of things you're putting asleep. Gotcha. Sure. I'll, I'll put in, I'll, I'll put in five hit dice worth, uh, yeah. so which would mean that I'm health. putting in three health. Yeah. All right. Hopefully I succeed my role. Equal to or under your willpower, please. Yeah. Please do me a favor and don't move dice while I'm trying to select the dice. Oh, sorry, roll. sorry. Thank you. <laughs> and I rolled, I think, too high. Yep, just by one. I just barely missed it. Um, do you want to try your luck? What exactly does that mean? In this case, I think what I'll do is uh, roll. I'll treat your... I'll treat your we if you roll. I'll treat your luck as that one point higher. Or okay. treat your willpower as that one point higher. But your luck will go down if you if you get over four. Sounds great. Let's see what happens. <laughs> I went over a four. <laughs> okay, your luck goes down. That's okay. It was a, a three high. 
Does, um, the, does the spell still work? Is that oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Terrific. Thanks. Rat nap it is for five hit dice worth of rats. Um, give me one second. I'm gonna check yeah. Real quick. I'll narrate some stuff while you're doing your thing. Salazar says, sleep to the rats, and then turns around to everybody and goes, shh, rat nap. You see the, uh, you see the, uh, two rats in front of you just kind of fall asleep. Um, and you hear the chittering stop, and then you see from out of the shadows, you see um, two other rats kind of go and stand sort of guard over a bit of cloth or a lump of cloth. Mm -hmm. Um. And you think you see the flickering of eyes somewhere off elsewhere in the room. But the two that are hovering over that bit of cloth just look like they don't want you to come near it. Do others see this as well? Oh, yeah. Everybody sees this. Great. Sorry. No worries. I uh, guess I look at myself. <laughs> okay. Uh. Ooh, let me see if it works. Uh, two. Oh, and I didn't uh, specify uh, PL, so I guess that was the PL. So. Okay. Uh. So yeah, difficulty two. So I failed. Great. <laughs> Down here, you still smell that sweet, sweet, spicy smell that you were smelling upstairs, it's slightly stronger, or at least it's not being blown away by the air of the, or the, the but it's also sort of overlaying sort of the, the smell of rats. Um, And as you get down there, like you see that, like yeah, there's several sleeping rats on the ground, but there's there's two others that are maybe th yeah, there's three others that are sort of keeping their eyes very, very, very pointedly looking at you with a a clear "do not come near me" sort of thing. There's not much in this landing. But it's a pretty hefty sized landing. You see that whoever was down here previously seems to have torn up a rat's nest or tripped over a rat's nest or, or did something to the rat's nest. Uh, is the, um, is the, like, are the rats like, is it possible to circumvent the rats by walking? Oh, yeah. Them? yeah. Okay. All right. Then I'm going to try to do that as slowly as possible. <laughs> They don't seem to react specifically to you at all, but even if the rest of you move after, they're not really doing much besides just watching you. I want to go check out that thing that those two rats are guarding. Make an intellect check, Sybil. All right. And I actually made it that time. Okay. Oddly, this seems like a relatively contemporary bit of cloak. Not cloak, coat. It's not something very old-fashioned because it's it's it looks like the edge of a fitted jacket. I mean, it's been ripped up by rats who who clearly nested in it. And you can see baby rats sort of squirming around in there. Um, 
but uh it looks like a like a, a fairly contemporary uh worker's jacket okay i think i'll i'll leave it there if it's got baby rats in it i don't want to I don't want to disturb the babies too much. Mm -hmm. I'll just kind of make note of what it is and maybe like mention that to everybody else. Like, is it anything I know that you like it? Does it, is there anything about it that, that, that stands out as unusual or distinctive? Not really. I mean, not other than the fact that it's modern and it's down here. Got it. Anything else you want to do? There are two exits, or there's rather a single exit from the room, but then you can see at the edge it branches to the left and to the right. But there's like a, a dripping tunnel leading out of this room, and you can see kind of ahead. Um, are we still picking up those those odors? Oh yeah, but now it's sort of laid over sort of the 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 damp underground under city smells that you're fairly familiar with. Is there like a direction that that's that like spice cooking smell is coming from more strongly? You can make an intellect check there. Okay. I mean, granted there's only one way out or into this room. Mhm. Mm through that wet tunnel, so you're guessing that's that's, oh, that's there but Oh, I thought you said there were two. Well, the, there's Towards the end of the tunnel, it forks. Got it. Um, uh, okay. That is a very bad failure. That is a 19. Yeah, that's... You almost lose it for a minute there with the, the smell of just the damp air and the rat nest. And... and we've already established that I am not a great connoisseur of smells and flavors. <laughs> Right, right. But this damp hallway is sort of in front of you, and you can you can see where it forks, like just in your lantern, just in your lantern lights. Um, and I think, do we want to break there for the night, or I, I can I can finish doing a description, but we, we're pretty close to a point where people are ready to break. Sure. Sure. Okay. Yeah, yeah I, I'd rather break now, since okay. I'm already distracted. <laughs> yeah. So we'll tell you that as you move in towards that wet hallway, towards the fork, you're moving across sort of a, a mosaic floor. Um, that seems to towards the uh, left. It seems to like you know you're 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 on bits of mosaic floor that you know are very badly cracked and have lots of bare patches where it's just packed dirt underneath them. But the mosaic floor seems to become more solid and more whole over towards the left. Um, towards the right. Um, there's a door you can see in your lantern light. Um, one thing everybody can see, though, as the, the smell tends to blend in with the wetness and the smell of the rats behind you, And it doesn't become particularly overwhelmingly strong, but definitely becomes more definite. The walls around where you are are sort of threaded with sort of these honeycomb-like 
spongy reddish gold. Um, that seems to have like worked its way into every bit of broken stone and across other bits of stone. Every bit, every place the mortar has come out of the wall, every place that there's a crack in the rock um, is filled with this sort of um, is stuff that looks like a reddish gold honeycomb almost and it it smells like s the smell in here is taking on this wet wetness dampness rat strange spice and the definite hints of something aramis knows and probably jabril knows too as saffron And that's where we'll leave it, and we'll pick up there for our final session next week. Um, everybody, thanks for joining us. We will see you next week as we we uh, continue down into beneath the canals for our final session. Have a have a great time, and see you next Tuesday. <laughs>